Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes. Celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast, and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor, and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Well, it's show number 157, 157 for the Irish Family History and Genealogy podcast uh, with curious news and notes from Ireland. Uh, and among today's topics are, number one, Finneran is the family name of the day. The book of the week is Mac, Mick, and O Names. The one-minute podcast selection is from the Hedgerow Viking History from our Hedgerow History podcast. The webpage of the week is all about Irish DNA. Number five, searching for Maloney, Killian, Fannin, O'Donnell, and McNamara. Number six, New web pages for guest pictures and links and member searches. That's right here. And favorite free Irish song videos. That's the old style song, you know, the Sean Knows. I told you all about that, and we're practicing for the Irish Song and Recitation Festival right now. <laughs> Well, let's take a look at the notes for the day here. What's happening around the Irish Roots Cafe, let in case you want to know. Uh, number one, like I said, the old Sean Nose, the old Irish style song uh, uh, group. We've started one up and it's up and running and it's a very small group, but we're looking for people who want to get interested in it. And uh, plenty of practice is in order. Uh, we met downtown at Brown's Market in Delhi, the oldest Irish run business in North America. Uh, for a meal with the uh, $3 band was playing in the background. And then we went off to practice. And, uh, you know, I'm still working on old Roisin Du Joe Heaney style and, and something called Laka Baka, something about a lame duck. Uh, but it's a lot of fun, I'll tell you that. Number two, I've added some more pages to irishroots.com, our webpage. Uh, uh, most of them are off of the uh, uh, quick and easy link there. And we've also got, uh, oh, I've even started a page on my family history, which I haven't done in 20 years. Uh, that's O'Laughlin and Donahue and Sullivan. I got most of the O'Laughlin, at least a sketch up there, so uh, that's interesting. And we've also started a little DNA page, and uh, I've also got a song page started started up. I've got to add the information to it, but at least I got the basics there. And uh, we're also putting up a page with links. I haven't done that in 10 or 15 years because everybody's links kept changing, and I just didn't have the time to do it. Uh, but now I've got a nice little program that I work on those quick and easy links with, and it helps. And, uh, hey, the 19th of June is another uh, the Browns Irish Festival uh, in Kansas City, the oldest place in, the, in North America and in the world, the oldest Irish-owned business. June 19th is their Irish Festival again. More on that later. Hey, now it's time for the One Minute Podcast, and we're taking that from one of our most pop popular podcasts. That's the Irish Hedgerow History Lessons, and this is one on the Vikings. I don't know if we've done it before or not, but I, by popular request, I'm bringing it back, and it was episode number 10, and uh, talks about the Vikings. And we've also learned some stuff about Viking DNA in the meantime, about the Vikings being concentrated in the Midlands in Ireland. That's pretty interesting, but uh, let's listen to today's excerpt. But today, today we're continuing on with the uh, uh, Vikings Part 2, and we're going to be talking about, uh, we had just talked about how the Irish kings had already been plundering the monasteries, which were centers not just for religious life, but for uh, the physical life and the wealth of the community. And now we're looking at about the year 830, and the raids became even more intense than they had been in Ireland and England and Europe. And uh, 
gosh, you look in the 830s, uh, uh, there's captives being taken by the uh, uh, Vikings, and uh, the province of Connaught, they say, was devastated. And in 837, a 60-ship fleet arrived on the Boyne, and also a 60-ship fleet arrived on the Liffey. So you're starting to see some uh, big powers starting to move on Ireland. It's not just an isolated attack. They'd been testing Ireland out for about 35, 40 years, and uh, they thought they found some weak points. And um, about in this era, they also came up the Shannon and the Urn, and there was a fleet on Loch Nee. Uh, and they used that as a base into the Midlands. And the Vikings even built their first stru- structures known as long ports, which were ship enclosures at Dublin and at Louth. So all of a sudden, the danger to the country has increased quite a bit, wouldn't you say, Peter? Well, that's it for today's excerpt. Now, that was uh, Peter Adams gives the answer. And if you want to hear that, you're going to have to go to the podcast and listen to episode number 10. I think we have three or four... Uh, uh, episodes just on the Vikings in Ireland and Brian Baru and the ba- Battle of Clontarf and myths and legends and Gormfluth and uh, all kinds of folks and the kings in the north and the kings in the south. And uh, now it's time for the book of the day. Well, the book of the day today is going to be Mac, Mick, and O names in Ireland, Scotland, and America. We included all three locations. It's an interesting little surname study that I put together a few years ago. Uh, I, I, I look at some 17th century, 18th, 19th, even 20th century records, and I study the names, and, and, and I give some of the sources, and I try to give the locations in Ireland and early America for these surnames that start with Mac, Mick, and O. And uh, I particularly looked at the 1790 census records in America, something we we don't really do too much of in America for the Irish's research, at least in my experience. And uh, we also look at the Irish census records, and I've got some charts in there. And uh, hey, remember that old famous saying, by Mac, Mick, and O, you'll always know a true Irishman, they say, for he wears his Irish for his name each and every day. Hey, that's a good one, and especially since I kept the O on my part. Now, my mother's people, the Donahues, dropped that O. I don't know. Well, they always wore it on the inside, so that's what counts. Uh, But, hey, we published that work to introduce uh, everyone to the meaning and the use of the family names. And, uh, you know, a lot of Mac names originate in Scotland and, of course, also in Ireland. And the O names are almost exclusively uh, uh, come from Ireland, maybe one or two exceptions, now, nearly, and of course, if you were Irish and you had an O before your name and you moved to Scotland, well, then the O would be in Scotland, wouldn't it? And, uh, you know, originally, almost all those old Irish surnames had a Mac or an O before them once they started uh, inventing a surname, so to speak. Mac meaning son of and O meaning grandson of. And today, of course, uh, they both really mean descendant of. Uh, now, some of the other surname prefixes like Gill and Kill, I want that you know, could mean follower of or uh, even a religious de- devotee of. But it's Mac and O for this book, uh, Mac, Mick, and O. And of course, Mac and Mick are the very same Gaelic prefix, so to speak. They were sometimes shortened for convenience, and sometimes census takers might just shorten that Mac to Mick. But later on, people would fight to the death saying they weren't related to the folks that didn't have the A in that or did have the A. And, ah, there must have been some feuds between some Macs and some Micks, I'm telling you. Hey, we also look at the topmost 100 uh, numerous names that retained the Mac or Mick in 1890. And we took a look, and you know what? Uh, McCarthy and McLaughlin and McGraw or McGrath and McDonald, and of course, McDonald can be confused with O'Donnell. I've seen it happen all the time in the records. Uh, so those are some interesting examples. Now it's time we moved on to, guess what? The Magnificent Seven. <laughs> Hey, coming up a little bit later in this episode, a video (coughs) showing you how to take a DNA test. You know, it's so easy. You don't need a video, but sometimes people don't believe it. So we're we're putting this YouTube video up there just to show you how simple it is. Uh, And now it's time for the Magnificent Seven. So here they are. Number one, Timothy B. Maloney of Marietta, Georgia. Welcome as a new member. 
uh, looking for the uh, Maloney family, also researching Henley, Doyle, and Egan. Uh, number two, Roland Blondin of Mississauga, Ontario, Canada. Your County Donegal genealogy books have shipped. Number three, Francis Caparelli of Steamboat Strings Springs, Colorado. Your County Limerick books have shipped. And Mary Kay Killian of St. Joseph, Michigan. Welcome as a member searching for Joseph M. Killian's parents, believed to be John and Delia Killian, lived in Roxbury uh, slash Boston after 1840. I wonder if they're related to the Killian, uh, the Killian beer outfit there. Maybe there's an, intel an inheritance. Oh, and you know that first name Delia has also been used interchangeably changeably with by some people with the name of Bridget. So keep that in mind when you're looking for those records. Number five, Diana Shepherd of Kent in the UK. Your Galway, Mayo, and Malaysian I families of Ireland books have shipped. Number six, welcome new member Frank Reese of Somerset, New Jersey, searching for Fannin and O'Donnell, uh, both of his wife's family. And number seven, Marilyn R. Church of Ajax, Ontario, Canada. Your book of Irish families, great and small, has shipped and welcomed gold member Daniel, Danielle M. D. Otavio of Glendale, Arizona, searching for McNamara Fitzpatrick. I've got the rest on the blog. Oh, welcome new member James M. Sweeney of Massapequa, New York. Huh? Oh, we're running out of room these days, aren't you? That was the magnificent nine, but I only had room for seven, so I should have stuck with the plan. Uh, now, I wanted to thank each and every member and each and every person that does uh, get in there and get one of our books because the only way this podcast can continue is be with a direct con connection between you and I and uh, the books and the memberships are, are the only thing that keeps us going. So I appreciate it. Uh, now we're going to take a look at the Irish family name of the day. Well, the name of the day today is uh, Finneran, F-I-N-N-E-R-A-N, and it's in honor of member John P. Finneran, or Finneran, I guess you could say. And uh, we've been looking for information there in our index, and right off the top, we don't have a whole lot of information unless you go deeper into the books. Uh, so we'll just share a little bit of what we do have. Now, if we take a look in the related spellings of the name, you might find an O before the name, especially in earlier days. And you might find an E at the end, or the end of the name, so it looks like Finnerain. And, uh, of course, that d double N there, F-I-N-N, -N, at the beginning could be just one N, F-I-N-E-R-A-N. And it's even confused sometimes with na the name of Fenellan or Finland. Uh, uh, don't ask me why. They're not that close. But I guess there is a rhythmic connection between the two, and the syllables are the same. Uh, and also, it's been shortened just to Finran. They skipped that middle syllable altogether. So keep your eyes open if you're looking for the name, folks. It's in variant spelling group number 2300 from the guide to the various spellings of Irish family names. I've got a link to that book on the blog. We just got a quick note on the name. Uh, we find that the Finneran family is linked with counties Roscommon and Galway in Ireland. And the 19th century shows that the name is centered in County Galway. Now, if I take a look at the Families of County Galway, Ireland book, it's got an entry for the name, and it shows one Edmund Fenneran in 1832. Now, that's a short short uh, entry today, folks, but that's all I had off the top of my head, so we'll have to keep on going. Uh, let me see. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, but before I forget, uh, our Irish Roots Cafe Facebook page uh for genealogy, history, song, and language is up and running. I'm trying to get that active again, and we'll be announcing some things there. If you're on Facebook, it'll be handy. Uh, it comes in second only to our web page. And number two, I'm going to be giving a five-hour workshop broken up into morning and afternoon sessions on Irish genealogy, family history, DNA, and even family history podcasting. So I can get you on this podcast, and I can also show you how to make your own podcast and uh, you might enjoy that and break through into the future of uh, expert genealogy uh, broadcasting. Uh, and we'll hold those lessons on the first day of the Irish Festival in Dublin, Ohio. That's Friday, August 6th. And, of course, we'll be at the genealogy tent uh, over that weekend. So it's bound to be good. And that academy is really a neat thing. i got a link on the blog. I hope to see you in Dublin this August. Uh, it's a lot of fun, I'm telling you. Hey, 
Hey, coming up later in this episode, slideshow of the Annals of Ireland. That's on the one of those quick and easy links on my webpage, and uh, you might enjoy it if you're into those books or you can't understand the different versions or editions of those books. I've got uh, some pictures of several editions side by side so you understand which ones are what. And uh, let's take a quick look at the free master index uh, of listing for names. It lists the name of, F of Finneran seven times, so it's not uh, real common in our records, but we've got it. It's, of course, in the Master Guide to the Spelling of Irish Family Names. It's in Irish Names and Surnames by Wolf. It's in the Birth Index of Ireland. It's in the Families of County Galway. It's in County Roscommon Genealogy and Family History Notes. And it's in the Mac and Mick O, na and Mac, Mick and o Names book that we talked about earlier. And it's also mentioned just briefly. We already talked about that in the book of Irish Families, Great and Small. Uh, and remember, you can search for any surname in our free uh, Master Index search on the webpage. Just leave off the Mac or O, just, just for this, in, this instance now, not any other time. Leave off the Mac or O and type in the rest of the name into the box, and uh, it'll return all those uh, people and all those books with your name in it. And uh, that could point you in the right direction, especially if it's in a, in a county book and it's a rare name. Hey, and now it's time for Around the World in Irish Ways, web pages and videos of the month from just about anywhere. Uh, number one, it's our how to take a, a DNA test video off of YouTube. That's real interesting, and it's very, very simple. So take a look if you have any trepidation. Number two, uh, oh, Sean Knows Old Style Irish Song Videos. That's what our class is sort of taking a look at. So uh, you can take a look there. I've got several up there that we're starting with. You might enjoy it. I've got more information to put on that page, but the videos are up. And number three, pics of those who have been interviewed at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, that's up on the web page right now, so uh, uh, that'll be good. I've got a link to all these on the blog. And number four, a slideshow of the Annals of Ireland, old and new, like I said a little bit earlier. So uh, uh, you'll be able to look at that and... Uh, That'll be a very interesting little thing for you, I think. Hey, you can also see all of our video shorts. I just did 14 of them. I'm about ready to, you know, one of these days before the end of the year, I'm going to have to do about 14 more. I've got plenty of ideas. It's just a matter of getting the time. And I might have to get some of my younger uh, family members to help me out, maybe to hold the camera. Uh, uh, but that about does it for our, uh, uh, our selections of the day for the web pages and the videos. Uh, what have we got here coming up? Uh, curious news and those notes from Ireland is the next section, and that'll be here in just a second. But uh, just one more reminder, I will be in Dublin, and I do want you to get the Dublin, Ohio uh, Irish Festival, and I do want you to reserve for that class or one of the other classes at that academy. Uh, it's five hours on Friday before the festival. Well, you come to the first half, the second half, or both halves, but just come to it and enjoy yourself. Well, this is the curious news and notes from Ireland. Number one, Grania Cronin is the first female pilot for Aer Lingus, and she has retired after 33 years in flight. So uh, an all-female crew with Captain Elaine Egan and First Officer Shelley Gahan, or Gahan or Gahan, uh, flew an Airbus 330 from Dublin to Boston before she made her final remarks for retirement and three cheers for the crew. Uh, number two, there's a record shark infestation in Donegal by Loch Swilly, and they tagged a hundred of those sharks, but they didn't get them all. There was just too many to get to, and uh, that set a record. Uh, number three, Vivian Rigney, age 39, made it to the top of Mount Everest, and he is the 17th Irish person to scale Everest. So that's quite a, an accomplishment. So if you're a Rigney, know that you got some mountain climbing uh, blood in your veins maybe, huh? Number four, Catherine Buckley went down with the Titanic at the young age of 22, and that was in 1912. She was going from County uh, Cork to Boston to live with her sister Margaret, and, you know, they, they did recover their remains, and she was buried in Boston, but she never got a headstone until now. Uh, you can read all about it uh, online at the BelfastTelegraph.co.uk. Got a link on the blog. 
Number five, bingo is topping the charts for those under 40 years old in Ireland. It's just getting more popular all the time. So says Tom Doyle, and uh, he's with bingo.ie, and he says it's more and more popular in the bingo halls in Ireland, especially in these uh, tough economic times. He says it doesn't cost as much to do play bingo as it does to do other things like sit in a pub all night, maybe. And plus, you have the chance of winning money. Yeah, what a deal that is. Uh, number six, Irish are, are masters at texting over the Internet, it seems. Twice as many texts per person uh, compared to that of their European counterparts. Eight billion texts in the last 12 months. That's pretty amazing. I got that out of the examiner. You can read the whole article. Got a link on the blog. And number seven, the, the 1901 Irish census is being released on the web. Uh, now, the 1911 census has been out for a while. Now, the 1901 is out. You can see that on the uh, National Archives uh, website. I've got a link on the blog. Well, that does it for the curious news and notes today. Uh, just a few more little last-minute notes here from me. Uh, uh, we've now got uh, several things going. Uh, the uh, Irish in America podcast. Now, I've got some interviews that I took at Brown's Irish uh, Festival uh, last year, and I finally got them uh, up and uh, ready to go on the net. So I'm going to have a series of 10 interviews from folks who know that neighborhood, and there might be just like people in the neighborhood around you or where you grew up, and they talk about the old days and the old personalities, and uh, it might just be good for areas all across the country. I thought you might enjoy it, so I'll be putting them up on the Irish in America podcast channel, and uh, that does it for today. That's all for today, folks. Joseph, warm up those pipes. Remember, we have a broadcast series on Irish song and recitation, on local history of the Irish in America and on 2,000 years of Irish history as well as on the counties and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, we've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important and write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way... A big thank you to all of our members, and away. <laughs>